Welcome to Adventures with a Very Small Lathe. This is the first tool I ever made on the lathe. Leaving aside the blotchy bluing is not a good tool. It's intended to be a slitting slot arbor, but has no real way to accommodate different slot widths without machining custom spacing washers. This is the project that taught me about runout, especially when using a three-jaw scroll chuck. The saw runs way out of true, and I consider this tool basically useless. I keep it in my box of written off parts as a memento. This is a video of making a replacement using a design commonly available from tool suppliers. The design allows for a wide range of cutter thicknesses and I took care to ensure I machined it with the best con concentricity I could get. I made the tool from two pieces of cold rolled steel from this single piece of stock, so perhaps this will make a good entry for Emma's spare room tool making competition. The first part is the end cap and central shaft for holding the saw. Concentricity isn't critical here, but the shaft must be exactly 16mm to keep the slitting saw firmly held. Cold rolled steel feels a bit gritty to cut on this small lathe, and getting a consistent smooth finish can be harder. After checking that the saw is a good snug fit, I turned a very slight undercut into the face of the cap. This ensures that the saw can sit flush against this face without the radius left by the carbide insert interfering with the sharp corner of the saw's inner diameter. The next operation is to bore a clearance hole for the M6 screw that will hold this part to the body of the tool. This bore also made the next parting operation easier. After parting, I flipped the part around for the final chamfer and facing. The next part is the body of the tool with the integral straight shank I need to mount it in the milling machine. The first operation was to turn down the shank length, but I stopped well short of the final 10mm diameter. The objective at this point is to reduce the diameter enough to fit into the chuck bore so I can machine features into the other end of the part 
as close as pos to the chuck as possible. Secondly, when I bring the shank to front dimension, I need to ensure it is as, it is as concentric as possible with the bore at the other end, which accepts the 16mm shaft I machined into the first part. I turned the face, outer diameter and ball without rechucking to ensure they're all concentric. This means I can use the outer diameter as a reference when bringing the shank to final diameter concentric with the ball. The first drill size is the top diameter for the M6 thread that will be used to hold the end cap in place. The second drill enlarges the hole enough for the boring bar and is drilled to a much shallower depth leaving the rest of the smaller hole at the bottom to be tapped with an M6 thread. The bore is the most critical operation of the tool. It needs to be a snug fit for the shaft and the end cap as well as having very little run out. Once again I'm using the tap follower I made in an earlier video, which you can watch by clicking on the top right now. With the front features complete, I switched to the forge or chuck and dialed in the part using the outer diameter. Once the shank was at dimension, I also turned a shoulder into the body of the tool. This would be to help hold the tool stationary while tightening the screw, and the diameter matches the wrench used to tighten the milling machine collets. The 
wrench requires two flats on the shoulder and is otherwise curved internally. I used a parallel on the first flat to help line this up parallel to the vice by eye. The tool is now complete and mounted in the mill it seems to work well. The blade movement is very smooth and no sign of run out.